This is an old web. This is an old Webster Chicago phonograph, model 130-1, that was made by Webster Chicago around 1947 or 48, and was one of the first uses of the new logo they had. By 1951 or 52, maybe even 1950, the name had changed to Webcore, which was spelled W-E-B-C-O-R. The reason why the name changed was to bring the company forward into the 50s. Anyway, also Webcore stood for Webster Recorder, not Webster Corporation. So anyway, if you want to find out more about these, go to www.webster-chicago.com. This is a Webster Chicago phonograph. That was what they called them. It's kind of dark, but you can see right there if I zoom in on that. Phonograph. Webster Chicago. It's spelled differently. I believe it's spelled in a German way, though Webster Chicago was not a German company. So anyway, here's somebody. Pete Fulvius Honors put this on it because it was used in institutionally. Stereo records will be ruined. Use old LP and RP or uh, no. Well use old LP and HF records only. And then here it says seventy-eight off. 45 off 78 or 33. I don't know why it has more than one off position. It seems odd to me. But here, this is how you change that. The tone and volume knobs are on the front. The speaker's in there. It's kind of bashed in, but that's where the speaker is. And then you can see it's again in a burgundy case like most Webster Chicago equipment was. Has the kind of handle that almost all Webster Chicago equipment did. You can see the tone arm. It's all metal. They couldn't make plastic ones back then. That, and anyway, then turning it around to the back and see that the tag says Webster Chicago model 130-1 operate on AC current at 105 to 120 volts 60 cycles, 45 watts. Chicago, Illinois, USA, RMA, Radio Members Association, 375. To replace tubes, remove grill plate from bottom of case. Care should be taken to assure tubes being replaced in proper sockets. Anyway, what vacuum tubes were, for people who don't know, is that before the transistor was developed, which was actually developed in 1945, but before it became common and used a lot, any, which was in the 60s, appliances took what were called vacuum tubes. The electronic appliances did that do with audio and television images. As you can see, it's kind of messed up in here, but that's what the vacuum tubes look like. They used to have mercury in them, and they would after about five, ten years, they'd be the mercury would be depleted, and the tube would blow out, and you'd have to replace it. Most hardwares had what was called a tube tester, where they could test them. And just like with the fluorescent light, or like any, or like a computer nowadays, the tubes had to warm up. They wouldn't, it wouldn't come on instantly. You turned on, and after about thirty seconds, the amplifier would kick in, so you could hear what so you could hear this no sound, so you had to wait a while for it to warm up. The tubes, were, the tubes came out all together, and they had this grill over them. It's important to remember if anybody's ever working with anything with vacuum tubes to wait 72 or better, more like 120 hours for it to, for all the electricity to discharge. Even if it's not plugged in, I repeat, even if it's not plugged in, you can very badly hurt yourself if not kill yourself trying to unplug these if you have any contact with the wires in them. They have capacitors which store electricity, like a battery. So anyway, back, so then that was a tangent. So anyway, to get back to it, that's where the air vent is. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching it.